What's up, guys? So in this video, I'm going to be talking about a very highly requested video, and that is how can the government stop Bitcoin? Now, I'm going to touch on some points. Uh, I might not, I'm not going to be touching on all points, but I'm going to be touching on key points that I think are the most important. If I do miss any, please, by all means, leave a comment below the video. Okay, so it's a very difficult question, but a very easy question at the exact same time. There's many different variables and many different outcomes. You can almost akin it to uh, trying to figure out game theory, which is quite complicated because there's so many different outcomes. Scenario. The government wants to stop Bitcoin. Let's say they start just banning it. For example, it's banned in Venezuela. Uh, it's banned in other countries. Well, what happens? Everything goes un underground. Same thing like when they banned alcohol over here with Al Capone. Well, guess what? It's underground. Same thing with half the drugs banned, you know, like psilocybin and then DMT and, and uh, you know, MDMA. It goes underground. The more you ban something, the more people get access to and the more people go behind your back. So the key or the moral of the story is don't ban it. So banning it won't stop it. Okay, so that's out of the way. Legalities is not going to stop it. So which leads me to the first point. So the first point is exchanges, which I currently think probably is one of the weakest points of the crypto universe because everything flows in and everything flows out. You know, there are the cent they are the center of receiving and buying crypto and they are the center of exiting crypto. Now what the government can do with exchanges because they are a center, a centralized server, they are, they are a business, they have liabilities, they have people who are owners and CEOs, they can literally just go to exchanges like we saw in China and be like, you're done, period. But this is not going to really stop Bitcoin. The, pr the price will drop, sure, but it's not actually stopping the Bitcoin blockchain. It's stopping a lot of people from having access to Bitcoin. But then again, we have services like local Bitcoin where I can just go to peer to peer. And that's the whole purpose. I think, you know, I, I, I would ideally like to see exchanges disappear in the future. I think the whole is, it's an oxymoron. The whole idea of having a centralized, uh, player control what I can buy and when I can exit defeats the whole purpose of crypto in the first place. So that's what the government can do. They can literally go shut down exchanges, which will temporarily decrease the price of all cryptos. Okay. Next thing, they can go to miners. So for example, let's say China decides to go through all the miners or the whole global government society to get together and attack the miners. Yes, hash rates will go down. Uh, but the beautiful thing about it, that doesn't stop the Bitcoin blockchain. Yeah, transactions will decrease. Yeah, transaction confirmation time will take forever, etc., etc. But at the end of the day, the Bitcoin blockchain doesn't stop. You're not destroying anything. The beautiful thing about it is like people can join anywhere around the world to start mining it. Uh, so even you know, attacking miners and let's say shutting them down legally or forcefully will not stop it. Now let's add an adjunct to the miners. Imagine if governments decide to become miners. So there's some theory where uh, governments would join the mining party, create these massive pools of mining uh, power and hash rates, and then eventually leave and cause issues. Once again, yeah, sure, they're going to cause a price to decrease. Yeah, transaction time will take forever with confirmation time, etc. But at the end of the day, they're not stopping the Bitcoin blockchain. It's still here today. They haven't destroyed it, okay? So that doesn't work. Next, stopping the internet. Okay, we're getting a little bit more complicated right now. So if you stop the internet, obviously people can't use any of the exchanges. People can't use any of the wallets. But that still doesn't stop the Bitcoin blockchain. In fact, there's companies right now who are trying to go above the internet, creating their own satellite network to supersede the internet. And so that's not stopping, uh, for example, mesh networks right now where I just need to be in the proximity of somebody. Once again, it's not stopping the Bitcoin blockchain and just slowing down the transactions slowing down the access to it. But I can go from peer to peer on mesh networks and still transact using Bitcoin. So they don't succeed there. Finally, quantum computers. Now, a lot of people say quantum computers will break all cryptography, but there's a lot of people who are saying, hey, they can they can break current day cryptography. But for example, in Bitcoin blockchain, uh, all they need to do is change some elliptical curve algorithm signatures and a bunch of little bit of other stuff, and they can become quantum proof. People have been working on this for a while. Same thing with Ethereum. So once again, even though they have quantum computers, the cryptography can still be protected based on new algorithms and consensus model. And we have much bigger fish to fry, or I say we have much bigger things to worry about once quantum computers arise. And finally, FUD campaigns, which we just saw, for example, with China, and we just saw with the Jamie uh, from JP Morgan. Yeah, you're going to cause FUD, and the price is going to decrease, and a lot of people are going to panic, and a lot of speculators are going to lose money. But that doesn't stop the Bitcoin blockchain. So at the end of the day, they can... They can put any regulations and laws they want. 
They can try any of these tactics they want, but literally whatever they do, they're not breaking the Bitcoin blockchain. To summarize, so can the government stop the Bitcoin blockchain? I don't know. I don't think so. I think it's quite versatile. We've seen it's been lasting for what? Eight plus years right now since 2008. Yeah, eight plus years. It's on attack on a daily basis from everybody, from government agencies to probably CIA to CSIS, etc. And it's quite versatile. It's, it's, it's handled all these different attacks. Like, come on, like, look at the purse. Let me pull it up right now. Ah, uh, 66 billion. That's the cap right now. That's, that's a lot of money for anybody who wants it. So I don't think so the governments can do much. What I think they can do is I think they can definitely control the inputs and outputs of buying crypto. I think they can control the marketing manipulation of crypto. So the mindset, the perception of crypto. I definitely think, and I know they've done it a million times, they can control the price with FUD campaigns, but to actually break the Bitcoin blockchain. So it's useless. I don't see them doing it now. Uh, I would love, I love for some of you to prove me wrong because I want to educate myself a little bit better. So if you figure out a way that they can actually do it, leave a comment below this video and I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace.